to the Teachers Talking Hoops podcast, uh, where I apologize that, uh, well, one, we apologize that it's, it's taken us a while to get a recap of the, the first two rounds of the yeah. tournament in. I also apologize. I have, I have terrible lighting in my house. It doesn't matter where I go. I'm always there. Um, I try and do stuff this time, and, and I'm just as dark. So I think that the only lighting that really – even my living room isn't great lighting, but that's the one place I can't go. So, so – Hey, you got you to make do with what you got. Yeah. Um, that's what we do here. So, yeah. So, yeah, we apologize. We, we are here to – Recap and uh, preview a little bit uh, the the games coming up. Mm-hmm. Uh, before we do that, I've I've got to check with Adam and uh, ask you know, how's your bracket going. <laughs> Wait, let me check because it's a better than yours. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me ask Adam in uh in the bu- buzz's bunch. What uh what place are you in? <laughs> Uh, well, I'm in last place, but let me just say that your max, your max is 1,100 points and mine is 1,360. So I, I've still got the lead on you. I, I need some Duke wins and I, I need Alabama to win. And yeah, I need Duke and Alabama. Those are my, those are my, uh, my, my two. So for those of you that couldn't follow, uh, Adam and I are in last place. Yeah, in second to last place in yep. in our that's right group that we're in. That's right. <laughs> but, uh, Probably for like the what fourth year in a row. Yep, yep. And uh, it, that sounds about right. You know, and I think if if we're to start anywhere with mm-hmm. this, I think what really hurt us this year is there. I, I mean, there was upsets, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't say there were. I wouldn't say there was a lot of real upsets. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like I think in that that first set of games, the mm-hmm. the for Thursday Friday, yep. there've been a lot of, uh, I guess higher seeds or you know worse seeds beating seeds that were better than them, mm-hmm. but it didn't it didn't feel like an an upset heavy tournament, and and I think the upsets that we kind of thought might happen like a, mm-hmm. a New Mexico over Clemson sure. um, just didn't, just didn't yeah. come. And, and I don't know, like, I mean, it didn't shock me that Oakland beat Kentucky. I, I didn't pick it, but it, it's, it, yeah, I don't know. It, it just felt like this tournament has felt very chalk. Like, even though it hasn't been exactly that. And it, it's hard to, I think when you watch a lot of college basketball, it's mm-hmm. hard to pick chalk in the tournament. Yeah, I mean, there was only seven double-digit teams won in the first game, and then I think we've only got one double-digit, and that would belong to NC State, yep. who was playing in the Sweet 16. So I, I, I think there's less double-digits than we might have thought, but... I mean, you know, I guess I guess I'll start. Uh, this is probably the big thing. Uh, Kentucky's bringing back Cal for another year. Yep, they're still committed. Um, I don't think anybody expected Jack Golke to go ten for twenty from three. <laughs> that was crazy. In in that game, tell me how how many of those shots that he took did you say? That's a bad shot. His coach Greg Campy says, I'll, "I'll send you the I'll send you the uh, the YouTube video." He says there is no bad shots, but the shot where he was he came off the screen, and do you remember the shot where he was fading from the left wing to the left corner? Yep. yep. Th- like that is a shot that nobody shoots. And then there was that other one where he came off that screen and shot it and like fell down right away and still uh-huh. made it. That that's kind of the point where I was like, these guys are going to hang around, and then Kentucky just let them hang around. And with yeah. about five minutes left, I think he came off another loop and hit a wide open one. And I'm like, they're going to win. There's no way that they're losing this game. Yeah. But that was incredible. And Kentucky played well in the last, I don't know, three minutes or so, yeah. especially. Yep. Um, um, I'm blanking his name there. 
Um, Mitch, Mitchell played well. Reeves played well. Reeves, yeah, yeah, Reeves played well. Just yeah, Reeves Mitchell, Mitchell, I thought played played well. Did you know that there is? Uh, and I knew the name. Um, mm. Like I recognize the name, but did you know? Did, random side note: um, mm. Trey Mitchell made me think of it because of UMass. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you know that there's a central kid that plays for Iowa State? Yeah, Hassan. Yeah, Hassan Ward. Yeah. Yeah, like I knew the name. I saw yeah. it on Mass Live. I was like, oh, yeah, I recognize that name. Yeah. I didn't realize that. He averaged, I was reading the article, he averaged, like he's he's averaging better in college yeah. than like he did in high school. Yeah. He's pretty good. He, I I hope they get beat tomorrow, though, by Illinois. Illinois is another one that's hot. But, I mean, Kentucky Reed Shepard did not have a good game. There no. were a lot of guys that just no. were not ready to play it all. And I think that makes you raise the question is, is Cal, is this still the right recipe for Cal bringing in all these freshmen versus an Oakland team that's starting all seniors and graduates? Yep. You know, yeah, the, the, Reed, Reed Shepard played like a freshman. Yes. He, it wasn't that he was just missing shots. He wasn't even yep. taking shots. Yeah. And he was and that, turning the ball over. Yeah. Yep. That correlation between, you know, mid majors and power fives where everybody thought it's all separate is not the case yeah. anymore. Like everybody's together now and anybody can, can beat anybody. So I give props to Oakland. I was rooting for them against NC state too. Um, but I mean, nobody saw that coming. Um, yeah. So good for them. Greg can 40 years, took him 40 years to get his win and happy for him. Yeah, that's a cool story, right? With, with, yep. uh, his dad or um, uh, Trey Townsend's dad yeah. play, and mom yep. played for Photographer, him. Yep. And Trey Townsend had a great two games too. Yep, yep, and he played really well. I I did watch their conference championship game that they mm-hmm. wanted to get in. Yeah, and he went on a tear in that yeah. game as well. I I don't I believe he's a, a senior. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's so tough now with like COVID. And yeah, all that to figure out like if people yep. get another year. That that's mm-hmm. a guy that you know if if he officially graduates coach must give him a blessing and say hey you know if you want to give it a shot at yeah. i don't know if he's if he's i mean it's, it's it's weird to say right because of the name brand you want to say like oh i don't know if he's like kentucky or kansas yeah. worthy but then you look at kentucky and kansas and- right yeah really kansas that kid from Towson that they brought in that i don't think anybody thought that yep you know um i guess there are other I double still, digits. i'm not a big hunter dickinson guy i kind of felt bad for him after they lost to Gonzaga, yeah, because it was especially like, after that Samford win. Yeah, he was just left out. Like the the coach would pull him out of the game, and you know yeah. Bill Self would take him out, and then they just they didn't have anything. Yeah, I know. I was a little bit impressed with. I think the guys from Australia. Um, Furphy. Oh, uh, 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 what, what team? Kansas. Kansas. Yeah. Furphy is it? Furphy. Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah, he wasn't a bad player. Yep. Yeah, he was good this tournament. I, obviously, McCuller not being there killed them, but yeah. But like I texted you, I, I mean, I maybe they beat Gonzaga. Mm, but, I, they're yeah. not winning the championship with him. No. Like the, the team I saw in this tournament, he- healthy. Yeah. Was not was not a championship team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah. I yeah, and especially because I mean Purdue looked really good. I know it's Utah State, but still, I mean, I was good. I thought I had Purdue on on upset alert, and they smacked them. Yeah, I think a lot of people thought that was going to be a closer game. If Purdue can play like that, I mean, this isn't even going to be close until yeah. they reach the championship. So that that's good for them. I guess our other double digit seed. How about Yale? Yep. Yep. But that was that was kind of the weird part about the tournament. Like you you had some of these these upset games, and yeah. then who who Yale play in the second round? San Diego State, and then they just yeah, didn't they, happen. They got smacked. Yeah, yeah like the Purdue Utah State that you were talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, I, it's, I, it's like the it's weird because this this season felt like anyone could get beat, mm-hmm. and then in the tournament it seems yeah. like these these better teams are just showing their dominance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I was surprised that Yale hung around for that long, and then they just took it to them. Same with JMU too. I mean, they just blitzed Wisconsin, and everybody thought that they were gonna, yep, beat Duke, and that didn't happen. So yeah, and you wonder, you know, is it is that a 
is that a bad play by like the mid major? Is mm-hmm. it them? Is them coming back to down to earth, or is it just kind of that that team that should be better being just prepared, like just saying, okay, like nope, not not going to happen to us, you know? So San Diego mm-hmm. State, Duke, just say nope. Like, yeah. we're, we're not letting you get there. Yeah. Well, what's it? UAB played San Diego State great, too. Yeah. Like, that could have been a UAB Yale game. And we could talk about Yale against UConn. Like, it's yep. points away. But, I mean, it, 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 there's the other thing, too, is the Ivies are that separation isn't there either. Is yep. You know, they can beat anyone, too. Yep. That's there two straight the years. And, and I think we talked about this on, on a podcast a while back. I think it goes back down to, and I see it um, on, online a little bit, and I see it in, in school, that mm-hmm. athletes in general are seeming to start starting to prioritize academics a little more. Mm-hmm. Not that they're necessarily into it, but I, yeah. I think you're starting to see if if you're just dumb and, and mm-hmm. you're like – the heck with school yeah you're gonna get bypassed because there, mm-hmm. there's kids that are just as good as you that are going to put in the effort in school mm-hmm. yeah and, and that... i think it's also a bit of like like i i don't know i think there's a culture thing to it where yes it, they're like all the camps that you can go to now mm-hmm. i think you're getting these these kids that are white or black or you know whatever mm-hmm. race that yeah. are, are coming from like good families with mm-hmm. a little bit of money and they're like i like basketball yeah and i i want to go i'm gonna go you know just play basketball somewhere and and like um like jimmer for debt yeah you know you're getting yeah. you're getting a whole bunch of jimmer for debt they're like i don't care that i'm i'm six feet tall and white mm-hmm. i want a ball yeah 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 i i give credit to to the Ivies and all those kids that it's not just academics. It's, it's basketball too. Hey, I saw a TikTok of on Monday morning. Guess who was in class? Jared McCain. Jared McCain. It might've been a TikTok class. But he was in, <laughs> but he was in class. At least he's in class. That's all that matters. Him and Christian Reeves. That's right. But Christian, Christian Reeves. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. Man, nobody cares about Christian Reeves right now. I'll, I'll I like some Christian Reeves. I I don't want to get too off track, so maybe maybe we'll talk about Duke real quick. For, no, I was just gonna say I'll give you I'll give you your like five minutes now to yeah. talk about how awesome they were on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. So I'll I'll do my my brief Duke thing, but I'll go off on a quick tangent where I I like loyalty and. Mm-hmm. I'm of a firm believer. Christian Reeves was like a three or four star guy. So he was never mm-hmm. meant to be sort of the guy. Mm-hmm. But I think you can turn – look at look at Ryan Young, mm-hmm. right? Like why can't you turn – I'm a firm believer you can turn Christian Reeves into Ryan Young. Yeah. And I think if this guy, if he is working hard and, he, and he's got the right attitude, mm-hmm. I don't – they're always talking about, okay, we need to go out and get someone from the portal or – Speaking about academics, and I, th- this makes me sound bad, so I'm I'm not going to get too much into it because we don't need our podcast to get canceled. But <laughs> I'm I'm wondering, you know, Duke. So Duke's got Cooper Cooper Flag coming in, but mm-hmm. they got that guy from Senegal, um, who is uh, yeah, I don't remember his name, but yeah, I, I know who you're yeah, talking he's, about. He's like the third. He's supposed to be the 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 third yep. uh pro- prospect in that class. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering. I don't. I don't know enough about the guy. Maybe I know he was in like the Africa Basketball Academy, so I'm sure mm-hmm. he's got tutors and all that. I don't know if that guy academically can get into Duke. You, you know, like yeah, it, it's. I don't. It, it seems like. It seems like now you're you're bringing in these basketball players who are clearly one and done, and you're not mm-hmm. overly worried about the academic piece to it. Yep. Um. And again, this guy's supposed to be. I, I read that he's like a raw uh, Wembenyama. Like he he's oh, not okay. really there yet, but like he could. But he could be get yep. there. Um, okay. And I'm like, I don't know. Just just give me. I already got Cooper Flag. Give yeah. me Give me a hardworking Christian Reeves. Yeah. That's just gonna do all the dirty work. Mm-hmm. Like, because I think you need that. Like, you get. I mean, that's what UConn has. 
Mm-hmm. Right? UConn has guys that know how to play their role, yeah. and they're they're gritty and they're tough, mm-hmm. like Houston. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So we'll get to Houston in a second. So uh, real quickly on Duke, um, I was I thought Duke played okay in the first round. Um, yeah, but not, not great. Bad, not good. Yeah. Um, you know, I think you always, as a higher seed, you always have to be a little careful in the first round. Mm-hmm. You're a little nervous. You don't want to – I think Duke is best when they're aggressive, shooting threes, and playing fast. And I think when you're a higher seed or, like, a better seed, mm-hmm. you don't want to do that in the first round because you're scared that you're going to turn over, you're going to miss mm-hmm. your shots. Um, yep. So you kind of play to win a little bit in the first round. Mm-hmm. Um, the second round, I thought, I thought, you know, they're hitting their shots, but yep. I didn't think they were hitting. I think they shot about 45 or 50% from the three point line, mm-hmm. which is great, but they are 38 to 40% three point yeah. shooting team anyways. Yeah. So it wasn't like this. I, I thought they, I didn't think they played outstanding that second game. Like yep. I didn't think that was a perfect Duke basketball game. Wow, um, you're critical. Yeah, like I – so I think that there is um, – I think there's room to grow. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, there, there's there's room to shrink. I was really happy with – obviously, Jeremy Kane. I mm-hmm. was very happy with Flip. Yep. Flip only took one shot in the first round. Mm-hmm. Um, and was – he had, I think, 12 rebounds, like three blocks, a mm-hmm. bunch of assists. I yep. thought he recognized every time I'm getting the ball, I'm getting double teamed. I'm yep. not going to force it. We're mm-hmm. going to win the game. Yep. Um, and then um, in the second round, he he played more to his strength. He, he played aggressive, good defense. Mm-hmm. Um, I, Jeremy McCain was great. Uh, Jeremy Roach played played pretty well. Played within himself. I love Tyrese Proctor. I've mm-hmm. always been. I always hear this narrative. Oh, like I don't know if Tyrus Proctor can, can play in the league, maybe we need to replace Tyrus Proctor with Caleb Foster. Tyrus Proctor is an NBA point guard. Mm-hmm. Um, he is, he's going to be a long term NBA point guard. He's going to play in the league for a really long time. He's smart. He's strong. Um, he, he has glimpses, right? Like I get frustrated with him sometimes because I want him to be more assertive, but he's, he's locked in. I, I love Tyrus Proctor. Um, so I, I, I was good with, with the second round. Um, I guess we can preview, I won't get into Houston cause we can preview some of the games a little bit later. Yeah. Um, but I would say my criticisms of Duke were I, TJ power didn't get nearly enough minutes. Duke was up like 30 points. Mm-hmm. Uh, and TJ power got in with, I don't know, five, six minutes left, mm-hmm. get him in more because he needs experience. We need to not risk injury. Um, yep. And, you know, uh, Jared McCain didn't play a, a lot in the second half um, mm-hmm. because he he had he had ice on his quad. Yeah. In yeah. The interview. So that made me a little nervous. Um, I thought TJ Power could have played way more minutes um, considering um, uh, what's his name? Um, Spencer Hubbard got in with like four minutes left. Mm-hmm. You know, so, and I told my wife, um, so two more, two more Duke things, uh, one is Spencer Hubbard. Um, so I call my wife in and I'm like, Hey, you got, you got to watch, you got to see Spencer Hubbard. He's at the free throw line. And she's like, Oh, he's so little. And I was like, yeah, he's five, eight. I was like, he's taller than me, but he looks so tiny. Yeah. Um, and the other bad Mark Mitchell. Um, assertive, he had a great dunk like, down the lane, like explosive dunk. Mm-hmm. I thought he played aggressive enough. I was fine with how he played. He got blocked five times. Mm-hmm. Um, Mark Mitchell can't get blocked and not get to the free throw on five times by um, um, J- Houston by, by JMU. Okay. Yeah. Um, like but, if, if, yeah, he get if he's getting blocked Houston. five times by JMU, what's Houston gonna do to him? Yeah. Um. If if so, he I was there was one point that the guy that fouled um um it's been a long day. Uh, the the guy that <laughs> fouled uh who got who got fouled real bad? Blake's. Blake's. Yeah, the guy that fouled Jalen Blake's. Yeah. Um. That okay, same the guy. Uh. Mark Mitchell had a fast break. 
one on one, goes up to jam it, and the guy just flat out blocked him. Wow, he was small. Uh, He's like six two. Yeah, it, good for him. Mark Mitchell needs to. He when he gets the ball. He's got to go up with such violence that mm -hmm. he has to get fouled. He's either, mm -hmm. he's either dunking or he's getting fouled. Because Flip, they'll double team Flip, and Flip will make great passes on mm -hmm. the double team, especially yep. down low. And yep. Mark Mitchell and Sean Stewart have to be ready. They have to know that Flip is going to dump it off to him. And it, it's got to be like a catch and like straight up. It can't be a catch, bring it down, bring it back, throw it up. It's just got to mm -hmm. be one motion. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. So, yeah, so I I wasn't happy with a little bit with Mark Mitchell there, but wow. but beyond that, I I was pleased. Okay. Um. So I I guess we'll we'll go into, um. Uh. I I guess uh, give me give me a uh. I guess a bad surprise, not a bad surprise, but um a surprise that was a bad thing for a team in the first. Uh, I guess just the, the the first weekend here, the first round, first uh, uh, the first two rounds there. Oh, so something that, that surprised you that like a team that that got blown out that you thought wasn't going to a team that um, you know struggled. I mean, I guess I have a couple. Um, I didn't think New Mexico was going to get beat that bad by mm -hmm. Clemson. Clemson was struggling a little. I didn't think they were going to beat Clemson by that much. What I also didn't think, where was I? I mean, I didn't think Grand Canyon was going to dominate St. Mary's the way they did. Yeah. Um, that, like, that was a closer game, but it, it just seemed that Grand Canyon had control of that the entire game. Um, those were my two. I would say a bad surprise for South Carolina is that Michi Johnson's in the transfer portal now. And I mean, you lose him, you're basically back to the yep. bottom of the league. Um, but in the, in the March madness sense, that was, those were my two kind of surprises. I, I would say were St. Mary's and in, in New Mexico. Yeah. I would, I would say, yeah, I think I'm on the same because we mentioned yeah. Auburn and, you know, yeah. Kentucky and all of that. And there's not really a ton that are left. So, yeah. Yeah. There's not a lot that surprises me, I think, mm -hmm. from Thursday, Friday. From Saturday, Sunday, I'd say one thing that sort of stood out to me as I'm skimming through a little bit is I was, I mean, maybe it's just a bias. Mm -hmm. I was a little disappointed. I didn't expect Michigan State to, to blow out UNC. But yeah, they, but I didn't expect them to lose by that much either. Yeah, yeah, and they were up by about twelve, I think. Yeah, yep. um, and they just they get UNC yep. went on like a twenty to one run, and yep. you don't really expect like I thought Michigan State matched up well with North mm -hmm. Carolina. Yeah, absolutely. Tom Izzo is a good coach. Mm -hmm. I I expected them to, I, and they they righted the ship a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. they UNC came back and they hung on for a little yep. bit before UNC kind of put it away, mm -hmm. um, but. I I was disappointed in Michigan State and, yeah. and I, if Michigan State had if you told me Michigan State was going to lose by ten or twelve I'd be like okay but for it to happen the way it did yeah, it was um, surprising yeah absolutely um, and then I would say the other one we kind of talked talked about a little bit I mean out of it, it was only a six three upset I was pretty surprised Clemson beat Baylor. Really? Yeah, I mean, I, um, I, I don't know. Clemson just isn't. They're just not flashy, you mm -hmm. know. PJ Hall, great player, but yeah. like he doesn't. He's not going to stand out to anybody. Mm -hmm. um, they got that other guy that I can't remember his name that we talked about early in the season. That on the podcast, they or on the the um, uh, the, when the game was happening, the announcers even said you know, this guy is everyone's favorite player at Clemson because mm -hmm. he looks because he looks like a guy that reminds you of you. And mm -hmm. you're like, oh, like I could play college basketball because <laughs> this guy can play college basketball. And I mean, you got Joe Girard. Who's yeah. gonna Like sometimes he's going to make threes and sometimes yeah. he's going to miss every shot. Mm -hmm. But it's just it's not a team that it's a team that you expect could finish third or fourth in the ACC. But you wouldn't expect to be a Sweet Sixteen team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's fair. And that's I, fair. I thought high of Baylor. 
I and, and really? Baylor almost got him. You know, Baylor kind of yeah. had a big comeback at the end. Mm-hmm. PJ Hall fouled out. Yep. Um, yeah. I would say, you know, just just to let you talk briefly about Texas A and M, I was surprised that Texas A. I think Texas A and M just ran to the wrong team. You know, because they they continue to put up points in this mm-hmm. tournament. Yeah. You know, all the way from the SEC tournament into this tournament, they mm-hmm. put up what, like ninety something? I think ninety at Nebraska. We put up ninety, and then ninety five on Houston. So yeah, like they. Yeah. I mean, you think you put up ninety five on Houston, you're going to win the game? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, and I mean, it was a great game. That was like, and again, that run was spectacular. Yep. I mean, I don't think anybody. I, I was ready to turn the game. I said, so there's no way we're coming back in a minute and a that, half. We're down 13. That might have been my, my favorite game. The overtime was was whatever. But yeah, that, that but, might have been my favorite game of the, of the tournament. Oh, yeah. absolutely. I, I think it was the best game of the tournament. Uh, hands down, I mean. And then that last second shot, you know, Anderson Garcia takes us probably, what, six, three of the year mm-hmm. and just drains it I, I, again. But, you know, like Buzz Williams said, it was great and all, but the shot was to tie the game, not win the game. And I, yeah. and you know, he's right. It, the, the, it boiled down to two things. One free throws absolutely killed a and M they shot 45 free throws, but I think they only made about 24. So yeah. you, you make four more free throws, that game's over. And then it's secondly, they couldn't get enough stops consecutively for about the last eight minutes of the game. Besides yeah. that, they did everything that they needed to do. They fouled Cryer, Roberts, uh, Sharp out. Like they, they played spectacular. And, yeah. you know, I, that's it shows that we can compete with anybody in the country. And I, I think there's a lot of pluses to take out of it carrying into next year. I, mm-hmm. I think we found a lot of a lot of good things. We need to add some pieces, but I think we found something good at the at the end of the year. What what would you attribute Way Taylor's struggles to is that an off game? Do you think Houston that was their focal point and they knew they just wanted to stop him? Yeah, I I think Houston's an incredibly tough team to play against. I mean, you saw Nebraska came out and had his way, but Houston the physicality is just a notch up. And I'm not saying Wade Taylor couldn't handle it, but I mean they we had played Houston earlier in the year, and they were I mean they knew what they were doing early, but you know credit to other guys they they stepped up so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So a, a brief we don't need to spend a, a ton of time previewing Houston Duke, but just a, on a quick side note off of it, mm-hmm. do you think, I mean, Duke, the narrative of Duke is that, that they're soft and Jerry mm-hmm. McCain kind of addressed that after the JMU game. Mm-hmm. And they, it, you know, and, and I think that was, that was valid enough, but I, I don't think JMU's Houston mm-hmm. um, is if, if the focal point for Houston is, is Jared McCain as mm-hmm. as you assume it kind of would be? Mm-hmm. I mean, the the writing on the wall makes it look like Duke's in trouble. Uh, so I don't think Duke's in trouble, but Duke needs to play very physical because that's what Houston's going to do. Houston's going to try and take you out of your your element. And I think they need to borrow what A&M did is getting to the free throw line earlier and getting guys in foul trouble because they're not a deep team at all. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, this is, I mean, it's going to be a rock fight. That That's what it's going to be. And I think Duke is going to win. I have Duke on the winning side. So just, I'll put my Duke socks on that day and put my Duke shirt on and root for him. But if Duke can match the physicality it, or even come close because I, I think Duke is the better team. They just need to show it. And I'm a little worried about – so I think a lot of it's going to be how the refs call it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a little worried about the refs, um, I, I guess, being inconsistent. So okay. I'm worried that Duke's going to get knocked around and they're going to try to respond mm-hmm. and they might get a couple of cheap fouls. And if Filipowski yep. gets in foul trouble, I think we're in a little bit of trouble there. Okay. Um, but I'm also, you know, I mentioned TJ Powers earlier, and, and I like him. Mm-hmm. And, and I think 
if something happens Faltro wise and he gets in the game, mm-hmm. I I'm confident he's going to be able to play. J- like Jalen Blakes, that's gonna be yeah. if he if, if he gets in, they they said he didn't have a concussion. I don't see how he doesn't have a concussion. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a gnarly fall. And he's just so good on defense. He's, yep. he's just so he he's a guy that that could play on Houston. He's mm-hmm. he's just tough and and he'll get after you and play real hard. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, I guess I guess we'll see. We will. Um we guess- got any, so you know, we we looked at A&M and and um yeah, so are we about. are we moving on to preview in the other games? Well, you got any any good uh, things that we haven't talked about, like good surprises, teams that teams or players that sort of stood out that we haven't discussed yet. Um, or I guess let me ask you. I guess one, probably the most obvious one, would be the run that NC State's on. Yep. Um. Now, so NC State has Marquette. Yep. Um. So I guess we, I guess we can start there with our preview then. Sure. Um, is do you think? Yes. Yeah. Are, are they? Yes. Is, yeah. I. I think so. I think I they know, got one more. I I really like. I'm not a big NC State uh, team. I don't mind the coach. Mm. Uh, who is it? D, DJ Horn is that their their guard? Yep. Not a big DJ Horn guy. Um, it, yeah, it, it's DJ, right? Not PJ. It, I, I think PJ. I think it's, it, it's PJ um, Hall, right? And DJ Horn. Yeah. I, I don't really like DJ Horn. Um, okay. I think he's too. But I you like DJ Burns. I love DJ Burns. That's I right. I love him because he look. He's like a soft teddy bear, right? Like yes. he's always smiling yes. and kind of joking around. He seems like a nice dude. Hmm. Yeah, and I mean, I, listen, I Marquette's bigs are going to have a lot of problems guarding him. And they, they put more sell on Kolick. I mean, you're going to – Marquette has to depend on other guys to step up. I mean, you've got Burns inside of them. It just seems like NC State has enough playmakers that they can beat Marquette. I don't think Marquette is that good. And I, I think you get the ball inside. Marquette's going to bring the double. You can make open shots. You can beat Marquette. I mean, yep. Western Kentucky had their number. Colorado did. I mean, yep. I, I just I think the NC State's got one more. And I, I think speaking of Clemson, right? And you're like, or I'm like, you know, is Clemson are they really good enough? Should should they be this far? Whereas NC State struggled more in the regular season. But NC State, they, when you look at the, yeah. at the team makeup. You're like, yep. of course, that's a team that that could make it to the Sweet Sixteen yeah. Elite. Yeah, and you get hot at the right time. And and here's the thing: is you as a Duke fan, you're rooting for NC State. You're, you know, you want NC State. And, and not to say that you couldn't beat Marquette because you could absolutely beat Marquette. But you've already beat NC State, yeah. So you yeah. know what to expect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Duke, Duke, NC State would be. I, I feel a lot more confident with Duke being NC State than when they've had to play like UNC in the past. What are you scared? Come on. Uh, Come on. Jeez. No, no, no. Not of not of this UNC version. Uh, everybody, you know, I'll, I'll save it for you, and I'll save it when we get there. Moving on. <laughs> so, so you're 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 picking NC State. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I, I yeah. would. I would. I would agree. Uh, I we talked about Houston Duke a little bit, so yeah. let's go to the other side of the bracket. Let's go to UConn San Diego State. Okay. Um. So Dan Hurley is not very happy about having to play tomorrow at seven thirty. Do you know um, what I have to say? I hate Dan Hurley. I know you do. Don't worry. I can't stand Dan Hurley. But he is not happy having to play early tomorrow. He- I. I wanted to I, see. I want to like. I I think he's a great coach. I want to know what he's complaining about. He's playing in Brooklyn. He's playing in Boston. He doesn't have to get on a plane till they go to the Final Four. He just like if I was if I was one of his players, it it seems like he's just making up bulletin board material. Like, <laughs> I don't even know if I would buy into it at this point in time. I'd be like, Coach, what do you like? 
I don't want to play at what the the second game is going to go off at ten o'clock. I'd be like, yeah. Coach, I don't want to play at ten o'clock. Yeah, I, like I'm hungry. I'd rather play at seven thirty. Yeah. yeah. L- listen, I all things aside, UConn has looked dominant. Yes. Yep. I I you know San Diego State they're a good team, but Ladie has carried them, and. You know, he's up against Klingon, and I, I think this is another UConn easy win tomorrow. That That's what I think. Because UConn has just looked great so far. I think, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'd i be very surprised if UConn lost. Danny Hurley reminds yes. me of um, Bill Belichick. <laughs> No, uh, he does I, not. <laughs> They're yeah, opposites. No, no, no. no, no, no. no, no, no. To, to, uh, from from the standpoint of, I think he's created this image of his his team is like a bunch of talentless. We are gonna outwork you, and we're beating you because we want it more than you. I think that is it. Ignoring the fact that he's that he has talent, ignoring the fact that like. And I'm I'm curious. I think it's I think it's all facade, but I think okay. his players have bought into the facade. And okay. I think from from my experience with coaching, mm-hmm. what when I started to have more success with coaching, mm-hmm. I started to learn. I used to think very early on that it was all about just like knowing what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And I started to learn that, especially with my better athletes, it mm-hmm. was making them believe that they could win. Okay. And that's when I started to have like real success. Yep. And, and I think that is kind of lost in in some coaches. And I think Danny Hurley has very clearly figured out how to make it so his players – believe that they can win okay um and i don't know of all the co- like like calipari yeah i don't know if calipari has convinced his kids that they can win they can win i will say this before we move on so did you see danny hurley's interview on thursday when they were up at halftime yes the interview where he was not happy and yes, they were because, up, yeah, something about I, I, I did see it. They were up 52 18, and he was not happy. He probably chewed them out of the locker room. I'm just saying that's a coach that I, A, I want to play for, B, I'd want my kids playing for. It oh, doesn't no, matter how good, doesn't matter how anywhere near Daniel Hurley. Yeah, I know. Your kid would only be allowed near John Shire. Who are we kidding? But Danny Hurley is has a way of motivating his kids that we just be, we are not champions, that we are nothing until we win it, and I think that's the message that he's trying to instill, and I think that is a good thing for UConn is not being too prideful, which will end up pay off. You got to agree with me there. That's, that's, that's Bill Belichick esque. No. Danny Hurley's loud. Bill Belichick is quiet. Danny Hurley likes to talk. Bill Belichick doesn't. But I don't know if that was Bill Belichick in, in practice, though. Okay, but we don't know what Danny Hurley's like. Well, I, we could probably form a good idea, but... <laughs> I think I think Danny Hurley is closer to Bob Knight than... Probably. Uh, probably. From probably. Bob Knight. Probably. And I see, so. I just... That doesn't... I... I am like a, I'm a quiet motivator. I, I may come over and mm. let okay. me, um, I, I've started to get to the point where my athletes, where they, they know what they're supposed to do mm. and they ask me a question mm-hmm. and I don't respond and wow. I look at them. You call they, them out. They know Dang. that they're, that the question was stupid. <laughs> and that, that they shouldn't have even asked the question. Well, you're no Danny Hurley, that's for sure. You should you should try being Danny Hurley for a day, and you just just see what happens. You yeah, yeah, no, nope, you can't sports anymore. Yeah, well, it, it's, that's it's, it's a, that's for that's for another podcast. Yeah, it's a different type of kid. That's for another podcast. 
Um, but I, I think that's, I think you see it in, in some, in some aspects. I, I've watched enough of, um, and because we, we can't, we can't name drop and dis, disparage people when we name drop, but I've seen enough of coach D'Alessio coaching, um, to know that he, for the most part, I haven't seen him in a half time in a locker room, but I, I know that for the most part, he doesn't approach it like a Danny Hurley where I've seen the team sort of get down in a game and that team's going on a run and he kind of just talks to, mm-hmm. to the kids and, mm-hmm. and they are prepared enough to know what to do. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I think that, I don't know. I, I think it depends how there's definitely, I had a coach in high school who was a complete tool bag. Um, and uh, you said we weren't disparaging. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. no we'll, we'll we'll disparage. This guy was. Uh, I won't get too much into it because we could talk about uh, illegal things that uh, are occurring. Um, oh my god! But he uh, he was very Daniel Hurley like, and and we were at Central. We were we were kids that some kids needed it. Some kids mm-hmm. yeah. needed a a tough love father figure. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't. I had a father. Uh, I yeah. had a father that like <laughs> That's crazy. crazy. That is. <laughs> you're walking the fine line right there. You're walking the fine line. No, it it, it some <laughs> some kids respond to it and and they they embrace it. They're like, yeah, like this. But uh, I I let's just say I didn't need to be hit to to know that. I That's crazy. Uh, so That's I'll just give you that. Wow. Yeah, we're going to end up. Moving on, Illinois versus <laughs> Iowa State. Um, Illinois looked really good this tournament. <laughs> let, me, let me go back to the UConn thing for one second. <laughs> um, U- UConn is a uh, a 10 and a half point favorite. Okay. You, That's you less than I expected. Yeah, you I think they went over. Okay. I'm going to say, I say that when like 17. Okay. Whoa, well, okay. Okay. Um, That's so I mean, I would say oh, to leave off on the UConn, you mentioned the, the massive lead they had at halftime. I mm. mean, that that was surprise. I I figured they'd win, and I figured they'd win by 15 to 20. But, mm. man, were they smoking at halftime. They um, were. All right, Illinois, Iowa State. Random side note on Illinois, Iowa State real quick. Um, I was thinking about this. I I was listening to a podcast today, mm-hmm. reviewing the games, and they were talking about Illinois. Yep. And okay. I don't believe I don't believe in conspiracy theories, but if there ever was a conspiracy theory by the oh, NCAA, no. man, do they not want Illinois in the Final Four because of Darren Shannon? Yes, yes, they do not want that to be like a a big headline on Sports Center. I so I need Illinois to win to uh make my teammate lose in the bracket challenge. So I need Illinois to be Iowa State. So I'm rooting for Illinois because my fellow big man Dane Danger has been killing it. He the Morehead State game he was crossing people up like he was a six foot guard. I he he has never played like that all year. I. Man, that's late. Ten ten oh nine. Yeah, that, that's gonna have to hit the record button. <laughs> Plus the Alabama Carolina games on Mars, so that's that's the one I'm gonna be watching. Why is that predicted? What what time who, what game is after the, the Yukon game? Uh I Arizona plays before Yukon, so the Yukon uh but who else, who else plays? Who who's playing in? Is it Illinois? I would say is that the game that is, is out there the game in Boston? I think so. Because that's the East Bracket, right? So it has to be the game in Boston, right? Yeah, it has to be. Um, so you're telling me that that Daniel Hurley's kids would rather play at ten oh nine than seven thirty nine? Well, we know it's not going to be ten oh. It, it probably will be later than ten oh nine. Like to me. That like that's not dis- that that's like a favor to you. He's got some I I don't know. Um, so I I I don't have much to say, but I think Iowa State is. I've been down in Illinois all year. Okay. 
I I think Iowa State's the better team. Now okay. we do have, I believe, um, the number one offense versus the number one defense, at least according to Ken Palm. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So Iowa State, I guess the question is the question really comes down to I don't think it's so much can Iowa State stop Illinois because I do think they're going to slow them down. But can Illinois score enough to beat Iowa State? I think I think it's a question of can Iowa State score enough to beat Illinois. Okay. Um, I, I think if Iowa State can score over 75, they, it, it's over. Um, okay. I Now, that's to say if Illinois scores over 80 or something like that, mm-hmm. I think Illinois could win the game like 80, yeah. 68 or whatever. Mm-hmm. I think if, if – Iowa State scores over 75, then I see it being like a, a 75-63. I see them kind of mm-hmm. like shutting down Illinois. Yep. Okay. But, it, yeah, I, I really think it's going to come down to, you know, we look at – look it up real quick. Mm-hmm. Um, Ken Palm says that uh, Illinois isn't – so Illinois – it's a number is, one team. I don't know how adjusted offense and all that works. I could look up whatever, but Illinois is the number one team in offense at 126.7 adjusted offense. And yep. Iowa State yeah. is Iowa State at Iowa State is number one defense at 87.5 adjusted mm-hmm. defense. Yep. Um so again, I don't I don't really pretend to understand exactly what those numbers mean. But it's Illinois is I mean Illinois is ninety second in adjusted mm-hmm. defense. Okay, Illinois yeah, is, so you're like, gonna have to guard that a yeah, little. They're they're terrible at defense. That's like okay. Illinois is is I guess average at defense. And okay. usually if you want to win, I believe more often than not. They mm-hmm. say they you want to be in the top twenty in both. You don't have to be high in okay. both, but you want to be top yeah. twenty in both. Okay. And Iowa State is forty ninth in offense. I mean, that's not a terrible mm. offense, but that's not great either. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but the numbers say the numbers say that Iowa State is good enough at offense, mm-hmm. and Illinois is bad enough at defense. Yeah, Iowa State should win this game just statistically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I mean I think that Illinois will win, but you got Iowa State, so this makes for a little good friendly. This is like our our what's the the second our second chance bracket. Yes. Yeah. That's not in the bracket, but we're gonna keep it in our head. Yeah. Um. Wow. Oh, I was looking at the okay. I was looking at the wrong number there. Um. Yeah. I mean, the only other one that's in there is. You know, here here's a here's a good thing, and we'll run next thing. Um, mm-hmm. Alabama very famously does not play defense. Of course, they are a hundred and first in adjusted defense. Illinois mm-hmm. is ninety second. Okay. So Illinois is not that much better at defense. Better than, than Alabama. Alabama is. Yeah, and Alabama is basically like that's bottom. <laughs> yeah. Now, I I would argue you could say teams that are are bad at defense that are good mm-hmm. teams. Yeah. Part of it probably is they just play so fast. Mm-hmm. So, like, Alabama's just going to chuck up so many threes that it, yeah. even if they make them, the other team can can run, right? They're just mm-hmm. going to inbounds fast, and, and they're going to run down. And so yep. when you play at such a high, uh, such a, a quick tempo, it, it's just going to make the other team score. There's more possessions. The other team can mm-hmm. score more points. It makes yep. you a bad defensive team, technically. So yeah. I, I do think those numbers are probably a little skewed, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's probably the most intelligent thing I've, I've said on, on the podcast. But... <laughs> All right, where are we moving to next? All right, UNC Alabama. Okay. We've probably got a tiny bit of a time warning. Yep, yep. Um, I think uh, 15 I mean, I'll minutes. Go through quickly. I, I just said Alabama scores a lot. Um, yeah, because it's also that I don't like UNC either, so we're going for Alabama. Yeah, yeah. I I think I so I think I think Alabama can score more than UNC. It's a question yeah. of is can Alabama get enough stops yep. to win and, the game. 
what I've seen from UNC in that Michigan State game and a couple other things is UNC, yep. when they can put their foot down, like yeah. they can say, oh my goodness, mm-hmm. let's let's buckle down. Yeah. But I don't know if they can do that all the time. And nope. I think if they – if they play around with Alabama, they're gonna they, yeah. they're gonna get in trouble. Because I mean that game is gonna be a very fast game, but I mean both of those teams are fast, but I think that benefits Alabama more than UNC because Alabama's got a deeper bench than UNC does. Yeah. So I I just I think Alabama is gonna end up beating them. I yeah. I really do. What, there's going to be a game this tournament where I think R.J. Davis is going to have to go for 35 to 40 for UNC. Yeah, to win. for UNC. And that might be tomorrow night. Yeah. Um, all right. And we, we kind of talked a little about Clemson, Arizona. We talked about yep. Clemson at least a little bit. Yeah. You know, I so I was like, don't like Clemson. I don't know how they made it. I don't know what they're doing here. I like Clemson in this game, though. You do? Yeah, I do. I, I like Arizona. I mean, Arizona's one of my final four picks, so I'm sticking with them. I, I think they've looked really good so far. Uh, Keyshawn Johnson, I mean, he is athletic, and you pair him with Balo down low, and then you've got Caleb Love. I I, I think they're going to be too much for Clemson, but I, I don't think it will be like a 30-point blowout. Yep. But I think it'll be somewhere in 12 to 15 that, that they beat Clemson. Hopefully. Yeah, I, I think my thought on Clemson was uh, now after that Baylor game, I feel like they're mm-hmm. that was a legitimate win. Yeah, and Arizona, I like Arizona. I I've yeah. been a big Arizona guy. Mm-hmm. But they every time I'm kind of ready to like anoint them, they, they blow they it. Choke. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's kind of what it was this season. Like these these losses that just didn't make sense, mm-hmm. and it kind of feels like that's what this game is going to be. Yeah, I I don't know. I'm not with you there. I, I think of anything, depending on who they play, I mean, I think the upset potential is more there if they played the other ACC team in this bracket. But I, I, I just think that they'll be too much for Clemson. But I don't think it'll be a bad game. Yeah. Um, all right, over the other side. I forgot we didn't do the other side yet. Uh, Purdue Gonzaga. Oh, I think right, it's gonna right, be a good right. game. I I agree. I I mean Gonzaga has looked, I mean dominant. Nothing. There's yeah. no other way to put it. They looked yeah. great in the second half. Um, obviously it's a little different. You know, Ek is going to be matched up against Edie, and that's one of those other post matchups that a lot of people are going to be excited about. But like you said, I think whoever's guard play is is better is going to get them there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty even with Lawyer and uh, what's the other one? <sighs> lawyer and who else? Who's the other one that I can't name off the top of my head? Yeah. Um... Against against Nemhard and Hickman. I, what's the other guy? Fletcher Lawyer and who else? Lawyer's the one that I... And Smith, I, Braden I, Smith. Yes. I got way more trust in, in Lawyer, though. And Lance Jones has been great, too, for yeah. Purdue. So I, I think it'll be a close game. I think they have the edge. You may – I think – are you, you're disagreeing with me here, I think. Oh, yeah. So Gonzaga's 40th in adjusted defense, according to Ken Palm. Okay. So their defense could be a little bit better. You're a big um, analytics guy. Yeah, but I I don't um, – I, I don't trust Purdue in a game like okay. this. Okay. Uh, I, I don't trust their guards. I mm-hmm. obviously I trust Zach Eady, um, yeah. but I I don't think I don't think the guards are good enough. Um, mm-hmm. it, it, it's not even I think it's going to be a choke job. I I mm-hmm. don't think Purdue has. Um, I don't think the Big Ten's very good. Mm-hmm. You know, and so I think Purdue is a little bit inflated. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you look at some of these teams that, like Wisconsin got got destroyed, right? Mm-hmm. Indiana's not that good. Minnesota, like Nebraska's okay. Um, mm-hmm. I, I just don't think Purdue is is great, and I think Zach Eady in the Big Ten is kind of hiding a little bit. Um, okay. They shouldn't be losing to like uh, a sixty, and obviously they beat other teams. You know, they're yeah. in our conference, but yeah. um, 
I I think I think if if given time to prepare for mm-hmm. Gonzaga, like Mark Few has, or for for for, uh, for Purdue, yeah, okay. I'm gonna go Gonzaga. Okay. A little uh, upset here. And then we got Creighton, Tennessee. Yeah. This uh, this is a tough one, I think. Yeah. I I'm going Tennessee. I think that one Dalton Connect is due for a big game, mm-hmm. and I think that they have the physicality to really push Creighton out of their comfort zone. I, I think Creighton has been challenged, but they haven't been pushed to that limit that Tennessee pushes their opponents to. Yeah, I I think so. I, I think uh, it Yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna go Tennessee. Um mm-hmm. I, I do think it's gonna be a very good game. Yes. Um I think Tennessee might come out a little hot and then Creighton will kind of claw back in it. I I would be surprised if the game was decided before maybe the last three minutes. Like I don't know if it's gonna come down to last possession. But I would assume mm-hmm. it's it's like a within five points going into yeah. like the under four timeout. I'm a little upset that that's the late game Friday. I'm a little upset because that's going to be a great one. Yeah, I won't be watching it. Why well, you got? I yeah. I mean, I have a meet Saturday. I got to officiate. Yeah, so. late game. Duke's, Duke's late game Friday. Well, I mean, I'll I mean, tune in. But it's nine thirty. I mean, I might be done after – I might not have to watch any more basketball after Friday night, so. Oh, my – give it a break. Come on. You can't do that. We're podcasters now. You have to watch. You have to. Yeah, I was going to say, say, like, if we're pod- – we can podcast Monday, but that may, it might be dangerous. I – oh, my God. How much would I – if I could watch a Duke basketball game on Easter, oh, my goodness, I'd be so happy. What if they lose on Easter? <laughs> That I I could be oh I think with this Duke team and how you'd they be okay in there, losing in the Elite Eight. Yes, if they lost in the Elite Eight, as long as it wasn't NC State. If they lost NC State in the Elite Eight, I'd be upset about that. <laughs> but if, if they lost in the Elite Eight, I think this team has potential. But mm-hmm. I think at the same time, I think you'd be frustrated. But I think anytime your team can get to the Elite Eight, you mm-hmm. can say okay, like. That basically means we're we're a top. I mean, obviously a top eight, but it basically means mm-hmm. like you're a top five team essentially. Um, okay. And if you're a top five team, basketball, you're basketball the elite eight. Yeah, like it, it's it is what it is. Okay. Um, you know, but obviously at that same time you get frustrated because you make it that far, you want to win. Um. Yeah, that I mean, <laughs> I don't want to say it, but like if they lose on Easter. <laughs> I know what we're gonna get on Monday. <laughs> I mean, I, I just hope I, I'm I'm I don't know what time the game's gonna happen because I hope my family knows that uh, <laughs> if, if the game is occurring, if it's like a two o'clock game, oh, man. Easter dinner is at noon. Easter dinner. <laughs> go home. Easter dinner's at noon, or if it's not at noon, then there is no Easter dinner if they lose. Yeah, well, I mean, like, <laughs> my my parents know, my family knows. There you go. Been, this has been me for the last thirty years. <laughs> Yeah, it's you know what I I really am. I'm rooting for Duke and DJ Burns. I don't know who I would root for if Duke played DJ Burns, but I want that to happen greatly. Mm. All right, any any uh, closing thoughts? Any closing thoughts? I usually have something to say. So I'm going to say DJ Burns is going to put up 23 points, 12 rebounds, and six assists on Marquette, and NC State wins by 12. Wow. Okay. Big number. Big number. That's All what right. I'm going to – that's my closing thought. Houston, Houston's a four-and-a-half-point favorite over Duke. Okay. Um, uh, Jared McCain over under five three-pointers made in that game. I'm going to take it – I'm going to take the even okay. that, at five. That feels good. That feels like a, a, a good right number. Um. Uh, that's good enough. That's now six. Six would be like you're beating them by you know twelve. You get a little late yeah. three pointer. Jared McCain, I think, is going to be 
you're it's going to be one of the more interesting does he come back um yeah. Mm, no, he's not coming back. He's a top ten prospect right now. He's not coming back. No, he's no the the updated mock just came out. He's twelve right now, but in my head, he's at least what? eight. He's not coming what? back. No, he's not. No, he's not I, going back. I I think he likes college. He's not going back. I'm telling uh, you. Uh, he's not going back. This is your only that, year. He has overperformed. That would be a, a discussion, I guess, at the end of the season. We'll, we'll look at roster stuff. Okay. Um, all right, I'll, I'll okay. finish off. You gave me a prediction. I'll give you a prediction. I'll say that okay. – um, uh, what is it? There's eight games. Um, I'm going to mm-hmm. say that there is – give me two overtime games. Two games in overtime. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. And may I just remind you, I just thought of this. It doesn't matter if I'm losing you right now. All I have to do is beat you, and you have to watch one shining moment. So that's all that matters. Right. Hopefully, we'll be, I'll definitely watch it if Duke's in it. No, 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 no. That was not the, we're, that was we're not both, the deal. I did have realize that we we're both going to have a one shining moment, though, because that Texas, Texas A&M shot's yes. going to be in there. And, and then the Jared yeah, McCain three-pointer. He's got that game. smile. Man, what a good yeah. looking smile. Yeah. He that's definitely in there. They're both. They're both gonna be in there, yes. yes. Um all right. So we uh I guess I guess we'll yeah, I guess Monday. Monday T V D T V D. I mean unless you wanna unless you wanna if you have a little bit of time. Oh no, you gotta track me Saturday. I was gonna say if we could we could pop on for a quick like twenty minute recap at, on Saturday. Um I don't know if if Duke wins by if Duke wins this one also by like thirty like they did against JMU. Um, you can pop on Friday. Or I'm gonna do a solo podcast. If Duke beats Houston by thirty, <laughs> I'm podcasting. No, because no, you you can't do that because then if they lose Sunday, then you can't do that. But I need to celebrate the little. If they beat Houston by thirty, <laughs> oh jeez, yeah, that's not happening. They they can beat Houston, but I don't think it'll be that much. But I'm a little nervous about it being in Texas. Um, but I guess, you know, every one, every one seed, right? Because UConn gets Boston. Where's Purdue playing at? Yeah. Do you know where that game is? Um, let's find out right now. North Carolina Purdue. Did... Purdue is in Little – that's in Michigan. Okay. North Carolina is in – Arena? L.A.? It looks like, yeah, they're in L.A. L.A., yeah. Yeah. Okay. So North Carolina probably has, should be good. Good. North Carolina has the least home court advantage yeah. out of all. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, good. Well. Uh, yeah. So we'll we'll have to podcast Monday. Fresh off mm-hmm. that Duke win. All right. So uh, happy happy Easter to those who uh, celebrate Easter. Yes. And uh, enjoy yep. uh, enjoy your weekend, and we'll we'll be back on Monday. Mm-hmm. All righty.